Hi, everybody. We have something really exciting to show you now. One of the coolest IoT devices is the drone. And actually, the drone industry is expected to grow to $18 billion by 2020. So there are a lot of big opportunities for startups. Um, I think that many of the entrepreneurs in the audience would love to start up a startup in the drone industry. And there are also platforms that are open that allow us to do that. This is the Phantom 3. It's for $999. You can get a 1080p camera on the Phantom 3. They also have a 4K camera. The Phantom 3 flies up to 35 miles an hour, and it goes about two miles away. So it's unbelievable what you can get. Any consumer can get this type of thing. So David Moss here uh, is watching on a live HD video feed on a smartphone or tablet. The Phantom 4 actually does obstacle avoidance, which is really cool. So it's, uh, it's really amazing. And by the way, we have right here uh, a human sign. Why don't you guys stand up and face the audience? We're going to be showing this on video later. You guys have to reverse your order. You have to, yeah. So we will be posting this uh, live video feed to remind you all where you saw this drone demo and heard this drone talk, it was, of course, at TyCon 2016. So now I'd like to introduce the CTO of Precision Hawk, one of the very, very, very cool drone uh, companies that is solving one of the big problems we face in California, and that is a shortage of water. Precision Hawk is actually revolutionizing the agriculture industry with their awesome drone and open platform technology that I know my company is very interested in supporting and a lot of people in this audience should support as well. Please welcome Ernie Irwin. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, very excited to be here. This is um, this is my first time to TyCon, and uh, I am really impressed by everything that's going on here and the, the level of activity uh, around all these spaces. Um, it's interesting because actually, is there a? Oh, I guess that's what this is. Um, one of the interesting things, you know, actually coming up um, and speaking after after a drone. I'm, I, in this industry, you get used to being upstaged by the technology uh, because it is getting very, very good. Uh, I was speaking at an event not that long ago where I made the comment that I was differentiating serious commercial drones that are highly intelligent, highly automated, sophisticated sensor-carrying platforms with the kind of toys that your neighbor's kid is flying around and bothering you with. Uh, the difference is, and this is, I think, maybe a year now that it's passed, those are the same platforms. That Phantom 3 now has a tremendously sophisticated control system on board. Uh, it is incredibly uh, competent for carrying different platforms, different cameras. It's got a 4K camera. As, as, as we hear, these are, these, are, these are aircraft and these are flying robots. And one of the interesting things is, OK, so it's a flying robot. It flies around and takes pictures. But the real kicker is, how do we extract money from that? What is the value that, as a society, as industries, and um, in the commercial side, where's the value? Where does the money come from? And what I'd like to do is spend just a couple minutes talking about some of those pieces. Um, <clears throat> you know, as I, I'm the CTO and, and co-founder of Precision Hawk. When we started the company uh, in 2010 or even before that, when we were talking about it, we knew that the thing that mattered the most in all of these cases was the information. None of our users or our partners really actually care about the aircraft. What they care about is the answer that they need to make a decision. The aircraft, the platform, the UAV, and that's one of ours there, is really a means to an end. And we have to keep that in mind, that that's what this is all about. The end is being able to answer questions, and that's what's important. Um, and now I apologize uh, for quoting myself in my own presentation. 
Uh, the benefit of doing for that is that I can come up with all kinds of pithy and insightful comments um, and that are very well tailored to my own presentation. But this, this is actually something that's very relevant. Our customers don't want pictures. They don't want maps. What they want is information. They want answers. What they want to be able to do is to act as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, the example that I like the best is actually companies that manage utility corridors. Uh, you know, these power lines go through forests, they go through um, fairly, fairly remote areas, and somebody has to go out there with chainsaws and cut those right of ways back um, because of encroachment issues. And some of these companies will spend half of their operating budget on crews with chainsaws. They, these companies, they don't want maps, they don't want imagery, they don't want you know, fancy algorithms, what they want is a location to send a chainsaw. That's all that they want out of this. And what we at Precision Hawk are doing is enabling people to take data and convert that into information and ultimately to an answer. And really it's enabling people to go out there and do their business better. Um, <clears throat> so, hey, the fonts are a little bit funny here, but you know, bear with me. Really what the idea is, it's a, it's a process. You start with capturing the data, you go from managing it, dealing with it, analyzing it, and eventually to some output, some answer. And those are non-trivial steps that you have to go through. Managing the data is a big key part of that because very rarely in an enterprise application is the person who's collecting the data the same person that's making the decisions on it. Large enterprise clients nowadays are spread all over the globe and they are act actively working and analyzing that data for different reasons and different outputs at all, all the same time. You need to add, be able to add insight to it as well. Because as I said, a map doesn't really do anybody any good unless there's something in, in there that allows them to act on it. And then getting that, that output to them is really what matters. I'll speak a little bit now. Again, Precision Ox spends a lot of our efforts in agriculture. That's where we started. We do a lot more work now with oil and gas and insurance and other applications as well. Uh, but really when it comes down to it, you know, things that gets me out of bed, um, well the first one is being able to have the great privilege of working with a tremendous team. Uh, have a, a phenomenal team uh, that I get to work with uh, every day that is able to, to do amazing things that con constantly surprise me. But the other one, and something that the, the entire team shares, is a belief that what we're doing can actually make the world a better place. And a lot of the stuff that we're doing is really helping growers, helping farmers, feed the world. We all know that the world is a very complex place. Uh, the problems that are facing growers and a, and a lot of our societies are very complex. And we need to be able to allow people to do more with less. And this is a non-trivial problem. And here's a couple, couple different examples. These are crop damage from a, an insurance example um, where you're looking at openings in, the, in the, the canopy cover, hailstorm or something like that. These directly relate to the bottom line of a farmer. And so what happens is these algorithms, the actual output is not, not these maps. It's a percentage. It's just a percentage. What is the percentage of the crop that has been damaged? And, be, and based on that information, an insurance adjuster will cut a check. And that's what matters. They don't need to see the map. They don't need to see all this stuff unless they're actually going to go out and walk through it. Right now, the state of the art of doing this before drones was to stand in the back of a pickup truck and look over the corn and sort of ballpark and negotiate on how bad that storm was last night. There's also issues around large scale mapping. Um, you know, we, we talk about uh, being able to uh, help areas recover. These are images that were taken uh, during the Ecuador earthquake. We had a team down in Pedernales um, a couple weeks ago that was helping to collect this information, again, from an insurance standpoint. Because really what you need to be able to do is take this data and give it to a company that can then turn around and start getting money flowing to the people who need it. Now, the important thing, of course, is those images are not what they need. They use this information to baseline, certainly the low-level, you know, high-precision stuff they use to baseline. But what they actually do is run these images through a series of algorithms. And what Precision Hawk does is it hosts an environment, an open environment, that allows people to develop new algorithms and new tools to solve these kinds of problems. Uh, it, I kind of liken it to uh, an algorithm app store, where we will go out, you know, find partners or open up to partners who come to us, host the algorithms, and then allow, you know, our network of servicing professionals or customers to leverage that those tools across all of their different uh, problem domains. 
because really, you know, and we've heard it again and again today, the real impact is going to be made when you start to leverage this huge amount of data that's being collected all the time. One, one team flying uh, one of our aircraft can collect many, many terabytes of data per day. And that goes up into the cloud and can be stored there. Now, you know, those, those damage assessment maps, those are valuable. And there's a lot of work that's being done at universities to understand what those actually mean. But as you're going forward, the real value is going to be extracting the big data value out of those things. Trying to find out, for instance, um, the front of a particular pest that's moving through. Um, uh, trying to understand what the harvesting times are of um, a particular crop. Understanding what the crop yields are going to be, because that's going to impact the insurance rates, that's going to impact farmer yield, that's going to impact transportation networks. And that's just in agriculture. That's not even talking about all these other industries uh, that we need to deal with as well. Um, and so the opportunity for real thought leadership in these spaces is what is very exciting about this. You know, algorithms, you know, deep learning is a, is a very popular tool these days, but there's other ones too, for looking at this information over time and trying to extract value out of it. And I would encourage anybody who's thinking about, you know, where is some of the opportunities for getting into this space, I would highly, highly recommend if you have expertise in analytics, in uh, geomatics, um, and this kind of analysis, there's a huge gap there between right now what we can collect and what we can use. And algorithms and tools to bridge that gap are being developed incredibly quickly, but there's huge value in all of that stuff coming forward. Uh, so um, again, that's a very quick overview of the kind of stuff we do and, and the value that we see going forward from a commercial standpoint. Um, I'm certainly gonna be around afterwards if anybody has any questions, but uh, just to, to sum up, Again, it's about the information, and more than the information, it's about being able to answer questions. That's what this is all about. Thank you. <laughs>